views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I want to welcome you. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. Thank you all for tuning us in and turning us on. Wow. You know, it's kind of been like interesting since we've been doing all these video shows of of not being in the studio as much. And I will tell you that there's nothing quite like it. You know, there's really, as Katya will tell you today, my very special uh, co-host for today's show, uh, Katya Dafani, um, there's nothing quite like being here. You know, there's an energy that happens in here. Uh, And yet at the same time, I will tell you the challenge for someone like me who usually wears headphones like, oh, let me think, maybe four to six hours a day. You know, we're adjusting to sound. We're adjusting to, you know, how we see things. And yet at the same time to make sure that we're giving you the messages that you so want. Today's show is so important. You know, it's been part of my own healing journey and part of getting to know, you know, Katya and what she has done to help people in the world. So today it's why, why, and it's a big why, why herbal medicine is relevant in modern integrated health care. This is so very important today. You know, I was going through and I was looking through some um, health care plans, right? Because I'm going through, it's that time of year, you got to look, you got to decide, you got to sign up. And I was shocked at the plans that don't include any aspect of this even today, even today, even in Washington state. But what is it we've learned about this? You know, I'll tell you, I have two people that I know in my life that right now, given all of the diagnoses, given everything that's been laid out on paper, they shouldn't actually be here. But what is it about what they've done outside of the conventional realm to support their body that has made a difference? Well, for those of you, I know you know who Katya is. And I will say this, that even if I would spend the next hour trying to describe and explain what she does to help people, we would barely scratch the surface because she's somebody that works day to day, day in, day out, helping people come up with a solution that is custom, custom made for who they are. I will tell you that what I love about Katia is we're getting ready for the holiday season. And so I'm already thinking of the gifts that she and I are going to put together to give to people because it is magical when you could see what it looks like to take herbs to take special special things that are grown from the earth and put them together whether they're oils or whether they're incense it doesn't matter to put them together in a healing way and so today I want to reintroduce all of you to Katya what she does how she does it but I know this for sure nobody does it better when you go to visit her at her fabulous shop in Kirkland which we're going to tell you all about or you take one of her soap classes or like I did, <laughs> like I did, make a special lotion out of things that are so important, you get something magical and healing. 
And so today, it's a great, great show. Katya, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. What an amazing introduction. I'm really happy to be here. Well, tell us about the shop first, okay. because I, I want to talk about that for a minute, mm-hmm. and because, you know, this is something that's been a landmark for you and many people mm-hmm. in our area. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But tell us about the shop, because it is a place where people can come and learn mm-hmm. and, and, and really bring things to life. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the topic today really... My shop embodies that in the sense that I have a little herbal apothecary in downtown Kirkland, and I've had it for about six and a half years now. And the mission there is to really provide high-quality herbs for people, but also information and education on how to use them appropriately in their life. So for me, I really enjoy the aspect of being able to talk to whoever comes in about where they are in their life, what they're looking for, um, as far as their health is concerned yeah. or their home is concerned or their beauty is concerned or whatever it is that's on their mind and really show them options. So whether it's they want to help their immune system be stronger this time of year because they tend to get every cold that comes along or flu, then we talk about options. You could put astragalus in your soups, astragalus root, or you could mix it into your smoothies. Or right. you can take elderberry syrup. That's a big one this time of year, especially it's really palatable for kids. So we talk about that, or like you were saying, um, I teach a lot of classes on how to make your own skincare, how to make things simply at home for your own topical use, but also internal use. Um, I have one coming up in November called Tasty Herbals, uh, cordials, syrups, and elixirs, which are really fun to make as gifts because you can incorporate medicinal properties of plants, um, but you can also have them be tasty and fun and kind of a novelty, you know, to have after dinner or to serve to your friends yeah. or whatever and to give away as gifts you could customize them for who the loved ones are in your life right. and what maybe they're they're dealing with so we have all these bulk herbs bulk tinctures essential oils aromatherapy um, individual cold pressed vegetable oils and we really love to help people find a way to have less toxic products in their home how to change out their skin care so that everything they're putting on their skin yeah is completely natural and know exactly what it is and they can feel really confident about it but also how they can utilize those plant compounds to support their health whether it's they're having trouble sleeping because they're going through a really stressful time or right now you know like I struggle with seasonal blues this time of year when it's getting gray and longer nights so what are things you can do to incorporate into your life to make your body feel better so that you have that motivation to get up even when it's gray and rainy outside and take care of what you need to take care of but not only just take care of it but feel good while you're doing it. You know. Well, you know, one of the things that I remember, because I'm getting ready to celebrate another birthday here in December, and I'm I'm planning actually something similar to what we did last time. Mm. You know, when we put together a bunch of very special herbs. Lotion-making kits. Lotion-making that was, yeah. re- that was really <laughs> related to the people that were showing up. Yeah, exactly. And it was fabulous. Mm. It was fabulous. So, I mean, this is not just something that you, you, you have to just do for yourself. You mm-hmm. can inv- engage children and mm-hmm. family in mm-hmm. this. Oh, yeah. Kids love it. Yeah, totally. Kids yeah. love it. And like women like to get together and make their own. And it's just fun. And you can make masks. I remember we did the clay masks yeah, we did. once and bath yeah. salts and scrubs. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you incorporate aromatherapy into everything. And then you can mm-hmm. really like tailor the aromatherapy for what people are dealing with in their life or what they like as far as smells and yeah, I want to hear more about these tasty herbals. Yeah. Tell me about that. Now, that's class November 7th. Yep. That's got to be totally fun. Tell me how you do that. Yeah, so that, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going to introduce people to multiple things, but basically a way to make herbs taste better, right? So okay. you have bulk herbs that you make into teas, and some of them are delicious, some of them not so much, not right? Not so we much. That. <laughs> not so much. No. And then tinctures are extracts in alcohol and water, and they're strong, and they're not usually all that enjoyable either. I mean, you take them, and some of them are not so bad, and I take what I need to take if it's going to help me, and I know a lot of people feel that way too. But Oh, my gosh, yeah. But when it comes to, like, syrups, yeah. for example, a lot of people know elderberry syrup or the concept of cough syrup, right? There's a really great herbal cough syrups you can make. And so basically you're decocting or simmering these herbs and then you're adding in some sort of sweetener, honey, vegetable glycerin, something like that to make it more palatable, but also preserve it. So elderberry syrup is a huge one because it has a lot of antiviral properties, very immune supportive, and it tastes good. So kids will take it. Um, I've had countless families just like tell me how much it's changed, like their winter wellness for their family and cut down on how much they're spreading viruses to each other around the house and keeping their immune system stronger just by putting a little bit of elderberry syrup in their child's like 
food every day or having them take wow. it straight in their mouth or whatever. So we'll learn how to do that. And then cordials are really fun. Cordials are like this kind of, it, it just has this word just kind of right. conjures up this, I don't even know what, but it's a, kind of this mysterious herbal concoction, right? A, a cordial. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> it's a, like, I, you know what? I got a speci- very special holiday gift for you. I personally made a cordial for you. You did. See how good that is? Yes. Like, oh, yeah, I see what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, totally. People Look, are yeah, like, it's over. and you put it in a beautiful I was right there. bottle. I saw you right on it. A beautiful bottle with some cinnamon stick in it or some fruit floating in it. And people are like, wow, what is this? You know, so you can make a cordial that's like a love cordial, you know, one that's got all these herbs that really support, you know, that aphrodisiac effect, calming, like build the blood, build chi, you know, all these wonderful properties that herbs can have. But you could also have one that's an immune support cordial that someone could take or sleep cordial. Someone just takes a little, you know, a little little shot of that or a little tablespoon of that before bed that has all these really soothing herbs in it um, that help promote restful sleep or, you know, you could really a digestive cordial, cordial you know, to have post meals, um, something that's high in fennel and lemon balm and mint. So there's all sorts of fun things you can do with that. And cordials, you basically steep in alcohol brandy mm, mm. for a period of time. And then you add honey and um, whatever juices you want or, you know, can flavor it however you want. And yeah. you can add things like star anise, which is really delicious, and lemon peel and things like that. And then elixirs are a similar concept, except you're not adding alcohol. Or you mm-hmm. can if you want to, but that's at the end. Mm-hmm. And so they just it's just fun ways to like prepare different concoctions of herbs. Sometimes it's a way to get people who won't take things that taste bad to get them to take herbs in their life. Yeah. But it also, like you said, can be like, hey, I made you a special cordial. I made and- you a special cordial. <laughs> well, the other thing that I wanted to talk with you about, and I know we've got a lot to talk about here today, but um, you know, one of the things I wanted to speak with you about at the store, um, you know, is we're so now into our bullets. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I don't think that's a craze. I think that, you know, or a fad. I think that, you know, we are going to continue to use it. Mm-hmm. But what happens with that is we think we're doing a good job. You know, we think we're putting the right things in there. We mm-hmm. think we're drinking or eating the right things in there. Mm-hmm. And I was sharing a little bit with you, but we actually are not. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just curious about uh, now I already have a gift coming up in my mind. You know, how you can create a bundle for people that do those kinds of things Mm -hmm. to say, wait a minute. Yeah, I know you think you're getting all that from that kale, but Mm -hmm. wait a minute. Mm -hmm. Did you know this, 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 and this could help? Mm -hmm. So when we come back, I want to talk about it, but I want to talk about this in terms of why this topic, you know, is so relevant today. Mm -hmm. You know, what is happening with us? Mm -hmm. You know, what is it that we're putting in our body that we don't even know what we're putting Mm -hmm. in? But what do we think we're getting that we're not? So today, Katya is going to take us on a journey and talk about healthcare, how it begins with us and the choices we make in everyday life, and how we can learn to make a few changes so that we get on a pathway to wellness. Let's take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back with the show. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. 
A morning filled with dynamic, inspirational music, spirituality, and uplifting messages by T.J. Woodward. Come and connect with community conversations and awaken your senses. Awakened Living Sundays with T.J. Woodward. Join T.J. every Sunday in the San Francisco Bay Area Chapel at Fort Mason and live streaming online, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time. To learn more and access the live stream, visit www.awakenedlivingsf.org. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, if you want to find out more about us, go to the drpatshow.com or transformationtalkradio.com. If you want to find out more about Katya, we're going to tell you a lot about uh, what she's created and how this is so important. Now, whether or not you live in this area, you can still talk with her. You can still get some information on what you can put together as gifts. They're fabulous gifts. I know she created uh, baskets for me that, you know, are are perfect for people. So things get to be customized. You know, all you need to do is tell her, you know, who's the person you're trying to get something for and see what shows up. You know, but today it's really, you know, finding an alternative, you know, to pharmaceutical medicines or whatever that is you think you're on or, you know, maybe the Aleve, uh, oh, oh, can't say that. Well, maybe the that pill that you take, potion or lotion, five times a day, maybe there's a way for you not to do that so much. But you've got to know what it is, and you've got to know how to go about it. So how is your stress response? Um, Katya, first of all, let's give out your website, and let's give out the phone number so people know how to get get a hold of you directly. And for those of you out there, um, we'll open up the phone lines right now, 1-800-930-2819. Give us a shout if you've got a question. But how can I find out about you? Yeah, so our website is urbanwellness.net, so that's H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.net, which is Herb and Wellness, a play on words there. Yeah. So check that out, and there's a lot of information on there. You can link to our social media from there, but you can also contact us directly with contact forms. You can find out where we're located in downtown Kirkland. Our phone number is 206-330-2171. And basically, you know, we operate as a retail store in that you can come in during our open hours and we can help you right there in the spot. But one way to really get more time with us, if you if you want that, say you're like, you know what, I really do want to incorporate this into my life and my family's life. I'd like to learn more. Then scheduling a consult with yeah. me is probably the best way because you'll get my one-on-one undivided attention. And you can do that through calling or emailing. Our email is info at urbanwellness.net. So info at H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.net. And that's how you can interact with me from anywhere in the country, really, wherever you're listening from. We also have a contact form you can fill out. We also have a form for a custom tincture and tea. And so people all over will just fill that out. I'll get it directly in my inbox. And then we'll start a conversation about what you're looking for um, to help support your health. So that's another option as well. If you can't come see me in person, I'm happy to do phone consultations and send stuff out because... I just really feel passionate about yeah. the ability for people to access this kind of information and this kind of medicine. Um, and one of the reasons I really enjoy what we're talking about today is it's not if conventional or natural medicine is utilized. It's more when is appropriate to use which. And yeah. that's what I meant by integrative health care, right? Yeah. I am definitely not somebody who says you absolutely should never take anything pharmaceutical or Western medicine. Right. I think there's a time and a place, absolutely. And I'm also not a doctor. You know, I, I definitely encourage people to go see naturopathic doctors or acupuncturists or find people in their community to support their health on that level that can do accurate diagnoses, that can run blood work and whatever else you might need. But how I feel like an herbalist role can be, at least in the way I practice herbal medicine, is really providing that information about how you can incorporate herbs for prevention. Like you mentioned, taking a, a pill, say, for pain on an ongoing basis. 
while there's definitely herbs that can help address the pain, potentially, mm-hmm. like reducing inflammation with things like turmeric and devil's claw and celery seed, and then you're helping to yeah. maybe help with the nervous system. Maybe it's the nervous system that um, is out of whack because there's some muscle tension or something that's causing pain, and then there's muscle relaxants, natural uh, herbal nervines. And so, we, but, but one of the things we just really have to coach people on is yeah. you're not just going to be able to take an herbal pill and have it substitute what you're taking right now. Right. It's more getting that into your system, really finding it part of your lifestyle, helping reduce that inflammatory response in the body and the pain response, hopefully get you more comfortable using herbs, which are more gentle in their actions typically. And then you start tapering off whatever you're taking, maybe, but you can always discuss that with your with your doctor or whatever. But in the meantime, it's also very supportive and a lot of pharmaceuticals can be taken in conjunction with herbal medicines. And so it's not like an either or situation all the time. So that's something that I really like to talk to people about as well. You know, if someone has, say, headaches on an occasional basis and they're stress related, there's things you can even put on topically if you'd prefer not to take something. Like we have an excellent aromatherapy blend with lavender, peppermint, and Roman chamomile. And you rub that on the temples and the base of the neck. And it really, I mean, people are often amazed at how well it works. And it's something so inherently simple using these plant compounds and, and massaging them into your skin. You might not even have to take something internally if that's of concern to you. So these are options that we really like to provide, and we don't have all the answers by any means. Right. But I'm really passionate about using plants in their healing capacities because I've seen how they've worked repeatedly in my business, but also in my own life. Yeah. I've seen them work really well. And every, you know, health, health is complex. That's the thing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not this simple one size fits all or simple solution to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is a conversation that I think you need to have with yourself and, and make choices. You know, how do you want to live your life and what do you want to incorporate in that might be able to help you feel better? Ultimately, we all want to feel good. We yeah. all want to like be able to have the energy and the attention and the, um, you know, the enjoyment in our lives that allows us to really fully thrive, right? And so that's what it's that's what it's all about for me. Somebody said something to me interesting a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about this and I was uh, talking about you coming on air. And they said to me, you know, kind of like, you know, you know, if it wasn't for plants, we wouldn't be alive today. Absolutely. And I thought my brain all of a sudden tried to do some kind of math on that. Right. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking what about? Do you mean? But if you think about it, that is all that existed Mm -hmm. on this planet if you go back Mm -hmm. in time absolutely right that is all we had Mm -hmm. and where can you find in history where a species universally understood the power of something like plant Mm -hmm. right it doesn't matter if you're in egypt Mm -hmm. or in south america Mm -mm. no right yep Absolutely. I love that. I know if you really look at the biological history yeah. and our evolution, we completely depend on plants. I think it's easy to forget that. Yeah. You know, the air we breathe is mm-hmm. because plants expire oxygen. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Just to start with that. But there's so many other things that we're finding. I mean, this whole concept of going out in nature and forest bathing, I love that. Like the pine trees, for example, release terpenes and certain molecules into the air that by, that are very beneficial to us when we inhale them. And so there's a lot of, like, physiological and scientific basis for why we feel better when, say, we go out into a forest and breathe deeply the air there, and it's clean, and it's fresh, and you have all this, like, green around you. And even just that we thrive better when sunlight is filtered through leaves. I was just learning right. that the other day. Right. It actually doesn't damage our skin when it comes through leaves like right. that, that we've co-evolved with plants that way. Right. And then we consume them in certain ways. One of the things I find unbelievably fascinating is I've just been learning a lot more about the microbiome and oh. our bacterial balance yeah. right, in our body. And yeah. plants can really, constituents in plants actually really promote, they can promote the more healthy bacteria and suppress the more, you know, like harmful strains, basically. And so there's ways we can use lives, plants to actually balance out our microflora, too. And that's a huge um, developing field right now of really understanding how that yeah. microbiome affects everything in our lives, including our nervous system and our immune system and how we function and interact with the world. Um, it's just, it's fascinating. I and mean, when you learn how much of our uh, physical being is actually made up of bacteria and viruses and mm-hmm. fungus, most people kind of shudder and like, I don't really want to know. But it's like, we're supposedly like 10% human. And yeah, exactly. Rest, uh, microbiome. Exactly. And plants intimately interact with those bacteria and they respond to plant components. 
Um, so that's that's a really important thing. I mean, one of the books that um, has come out recently called Ten Percent Human. Yeah, she her conclusion is is eat more plants. Like if you want to have a healthy flora, you eat more plants and eating them and consuming them can be spices. It can be herbs. It can be, you know, obviously plants we harvest from our gardens or get right. at the store and put in our Nutribullet. <laughs> right, exactly. So there's a lot of ways we can incorporate those into our lives, and they're incredibly important. And I think that's what we're doing, though, today, though, mm-hmm. is really educating about this. Mm-hmm. You know, part of this is is understanding it isn't what we grew up with anymore. Mm-hmm. And what do I even mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. You know, you grew up with, oh, you know, eat your spinach, eat this, eat this, whatever's on your plate. Now there are many, many ways that mm-hmm. I hope we'll talk about today mm-hmm. where you can take a, a plant and it becomes a plant-based uh, additive to mm-hmm. a Nutribullet, mm-hmm. whether it's a powder, whether mm-hmm. it's an oil, whether it's a seed. Mm-hmm. Those now become part of what we can incorporate and we can get it that way. Mm-hmm. You know, we're in a modern society, so modern so modern that the number one movie in the country right now is a movie about a guy that's stranded on Mars that figures out how to grow potatoes <laughs> that generates oxygen and water. That, that's the number one movie mm-hmm. about the guy that grows in Martian soil potatoes that oxygenates the air mm-hmm. and generates Water. Right. When we come back, hopefully Katya will tell us, you don't have to be on Mars to figure that out. <laughs> but it, it, it certainly makes the headlines for a few things. When we come back, we're going to talk about some examples of how some herbs have helped people. You know, what does that even mean? Well, can you mix herbs together and make sure that you're putting the thing together that's going to take care of what's ailing you? When we come back, we're going to talk about that. You know, one of my favorite conversations is the conversation on licorice. Mm. Why? Why? <laughs> I came across licorice in my refrigerator the other day. Now, not licorice that you get like on a sugar stick, but pure, based, organic, black licorice. Stay tuned. We're going to find out whether that works for us or not. We'll be right back. <laughs> No, you got all dressed up for the club. Waiting on Nick, come pick you up. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic has asthma or allergies got you singing the raspy blues Allergy and Asthma Networks is the nation's premier nonprofit patient-centered network of doctors, caregivers, patients, and healthcare professionals who are dedicated to ending death and suffering due to asthma, allergies, and related conditions. Join President and CEO Tanya Winders each month on the Dr. Pat Show to learn more and visit allergyasthmanetwork.org today. Breathe better together with Allergy and Asthma Network. Have you been seeing numbers like 111 and 222 everywhere you go? Do you feel that the universe may be trying to get your attention, perhaps offering a message of some sort? As it turns out, numerical patterns and certain types of geometry form the very fabric of our reality, from cells under a microscope to the astronomy of our night sky. At Stellar Reflections, we offer special sessions which tap into these patterns, designed specifically to support you on your journey. The 111 and 222 activations are sessions activating new patterns in your energy field, which in turn can help you create new patterns in your life. 
After just one session with a practitioner, either in person or via distance, clients report gaining greater clarity, becoming more intuitive, and honoring their inner truth as they move forward in their lives. Curious about what these transformational sessions might do for you? Call 425-999-9836 or visit StellarReflections.com. That's StellarReflections.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Yes. Uh, For those of you out there, I want to make sure you go to the website, uh, Urban Wellness. It's Herban, like Herb, H-E-R-B-A-N, or Herb with an H, uh, Urban Wellness. And here's what you want to do when you get there, H-E-R-B-A-N wellness.net. When you get there, click on the classes button. Because one of the things I just did here with uh, Katia, we're going through here and we're just looking at things. Um, And she's got some fabulous classes. One of the ones that we did not mention, and I'll just mention it to you, is that there is a bath salts and foot soaks using essential oils and herbs. And that's going to be taught by Katia. And how fun is that? That's going to be on November 11th. So if you go to the website, you're going to be able to see all the classes if you click under classes and events. And so there's that coming on. And then you have, uh, again, uh, a bunch of others here that you're also doing, especially in November. The homemade gifts is fabulous, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's going to be November 7th. Uh, and that one is going to be body scrubs, masks, bath salts, massage oils, and lip balms. And I've done this mm-hmm. with my friends. Mm-hmm. And so we have to pick something new this year for me to do. During the break, we were talking about doing the bath salts. Bath salts. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Then you can um, soak your feet. Then you can soak your feet. Yeah. Um, and then also we should talk about this one because this mm-hmm. is a great gift-making deal mm-hmm. here. You on November twenty first. It's tasty herbals, mm-hmm. right? Syrups, cordials, elixirs, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So we what's were your talking favorite? Early. What's your favorite syrup? Oh uh, well, I love elderberry syrup, but I like to put like astragalus root and ginger in there, and all these like um, good wintertime remedies. I tend to use syrups more in the winter. I'm not really sure, but uh, cherry bark yeah. is excellent to, to put in there for coughs. Yeah, just to help the lungs. Yeah. So yeah, I like to just make these little mixes for. Cool kind of covering the whole respiratory tract in the immune system and then make those into syrups. But I've also made some really excellent digestive syrups, you know, with like chamomile and fennel oh. and catnip and put some mm. cardamom in there. Mm-hmm. And those yeah. are excellent because you can just take a little bit of it like post meal when you feel like you need a little extra right. help digesting right. or right. they're great to just incorporate in on a regular basis. Anyway. What do people that come into your store, what, what do they most buy? What do you see and people do? Well, I mean, we sell a lot of our, our tea blends, you know, things for anxiety, oh. like our chill out tea and things for mental clarity. Like you have some great mental teas. Mental clarity tea. You, know? you have some great teas. Oh, thank you. And you then got, our tinctures. We yeah. sell, right now, of course, it's cold and flu sinus season. So we, we sell a lot of products related to that, helping people recover faster when they feel sick or if they catch something coming on, which, by the way, either building up your immune system and not getting sick is often or and using something when you first feel that very first right. sign. That's what like I did. jumping on it with herbs. Oh my gosh, it works like a charm. Yeah. But once you're kind of immersed in it and fully mm-hmm. it's grabbed you, it's a lot harder. I mean, herbs can still really help you feel more comfortable and get mm-hmm. rid of sim- uh, the symptoms faster, but it really works best when you prevent or you just treat at the very right. first sign. Um, mm-hmm. And also, you know, there's a lot of aromatherapy things that can help keep your air cleaner in your home or in your office or uh-huh. whenever people around you are sick. And so I see a lot of people coming in for that. I'd say stress-related stuff is the stress. biggest thing. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. Yeah. I'm stressed. I'm stressed. Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I'm tense. I don't, I'm not sleeping well at night. Isn't right. that interesting? It seems like people, the more stressed they are, the less well they sleep. When sleep is like the thing Sleep's that would probably issue. make them feel better, yeah. you know, and be able to manage the stress better. But because we're so busy during our days and mm-hmm. so stressed that it comes out at night, like through our subconscious, you know, and I woke up three up. times last night. Yeah. That was insanity for me. Yeah. Three times last night. I know. When you do, don't you just wonder how people do it that do that all the time? Like, how do they function? Well, I don't know because I, I know that. And, you know, I, I know what I did that that happened. Okay. Um, you know, we're working on a project and I know I worked on the project way late Mm -hmm. for somebody like me Mm -hmm. and it's not that I'm worried about it but 
you know, something about the mind that's still in the project that is not like ready to shut off and yeah, go to sleep. Exactly. Right? Is that interesting? Yeah, you tell you got to tell it to go to sleep. You got to tell it to go to sleep. <laughs> and sometimes herbs can be a helpful way to do that. Valerian or kava kava and just be like, shut oh, up. Oh, kava kava, shut right? Up. It's time to go to bed. <laughs> All right. So he, I want to talk to you about the licorice for a minute. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I came across this yeah. licorice. And it's a giant bottle yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. And you, you knew what it was. Mm -hmm. It just looks black to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like molasses. It looks it's a like solid molasses. Extract. It's a solid extract. Yeah. What is that good for? Yeah, now, so I know that's got to be good for me for some reason yeah. or I wouldn't have it. Yeah, exactly. Licorice root has a lot of really beneficial properties, but it's probably one of the more controversial herbs, too. So when you brought it up, I was like, oh, great. Let's talk about this one. <laughs> 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 because licorice root really uh, has a several important effects. It is a strong anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. to the body, so especially the GI tract. So someone who's got acid reflux, colitis, mm -hmm. things like that is excellent. It's also really good for the adrenals. So one of the things it does is it keeps cortisol in the body longer, so it spares the adrenal glands from having to produce more and more cortisol to keep up with long-term stress that people, a lot of people have. So that's interesting, but if someone has excess cortisol, it can also promote too much cortisol in the body. So it can actually promote more belly weight gain and stuff if it's inappropriately used. But mm -hmm. a lot of times it really helps with energy levels because of helping the adrenals be more active. So if you take it in the morning, right. it can really help your energy levels be better and more sustained without a stimulating effect. But here's the part that makes it controversial. So it has all these amazing properties. It's been used in China for thousands of years, but... It does have a compound in it that um, act, uh, acts on an enzyme pathway in the kidneys that can keep more water in your blood vessels, which in turn can increase blood pressure. So for people who are prone to high blood pressure, which is rampant in this culture in our right, society, right. Or, or concerned about it or on blood pressure medication, it's actually not recommended to take licorice right. in a therapeutic amount. In teas and things like that where it's probably just there for flavoring or a touch of taste because it's sweet, um, then it, it's fine. But, you know, you just want to make sure that someone is not any of those, like, factors. If right. you know your adrenals are depleted and your cortisol levels are low and your blood pressure is normal or low, it's great. Now really I know why it. I have it. My <laughs> blood pressure, now, now I got it. Okay. When, I, when I go into the doctor and they do my blood pressure, they wonder if I'm actually even alive. Oh, it's no, so really? low. I mean, it really is. It's They're ridiculous. Like, what's going on? They're like, well, the machine's broken again. I, and I keep telling them, And you're them, like, no. no, no, that's normal for me. No, no. And, you know, parallel to that is my body temperature is mm. low. Mm. You know, it's a degree lower. So can you imagine be, being me in the doctor's office trying to explain why I actually believe I have a temperature and them saying I don't. Right. They're like, that's yeah. actually normal. You're like, no, that's high for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, but see, that's important. It you is. know this about yourself. It is. And that's really the point of what we're doing today mm -hmm. is that this is why we go in and we talk with mm -hmm. you. Because mm -hmm. for so many years, we went through a phase where people were just pulling things off a shelf and mm -hmm. mixing their own stuff mm -hmm. up, mm -hmm. not knowing what they were putting mm -hmm. together and whether actually some things do go well together. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you that. Are there some herbs that if we put them together, not so good? Well, can you can you make them? I want to say, yeah. Can you make a mistake by thinking you're all about the herbs and kind of throw stuff in there like I do, and then not be so good? Well, there's nothing I can think of that's like detrimental if right, you put right. them together, but it can be counterproductive. Oh, okay, uh, for right. example, if you put something together that's highly carbo rich in carbohydrates and more mucilaginous, and you put something that's very high in tannins and astringent. They're actually going to kind of cancel each other out. And so when you consume the herbal mixture, you're not going to get the benefits from it nearly as much. It's basically like they bind to each right. other. Oh, wow. And then your body doesn't absorb them as well. Right. So that's probably one of the primary examples. Like if you were to put something like golden seal, which is very tannic and very astringent, with an herb like marshmallow, which is very like mucilaginous and slippery and very mm. good for soothing, mm. those two would kind of cancel each other out. So you putting those together would would not really be effective. So that's mm -hmm. a lot of it for me is more like maximizing effectiveness. And the more we learn about herbs and their individual constituents, it does help us understand, okay, like for example, astragalus root. It's been classically put slices into soups or beans or rice and you cook it in the winter and you consume that food. You pull out the root when it's done because it's very fibrous. Right. But you're getting those components into the water portion of whatever you're making well, the carbohydrates in there are actually really wonderful for supporting the immune system. So they strengthen and support immune system function. But there is a component in astragalus root called astragaliside or astragalicides. There's a class of them. And they're more uh, fat-soluble. So they actually come out better in alcohol or with a fat 
fatty substance. Mm -hmm. So you kind of need to have that balance, right? The astragaloside is the more like anti-tumor um, aspect of astragalus root and also has aspects that support the immune system. So yeah. you want to get both, ideally. And a water extract is going to get out more of those carbohydrates. And a tincture, an alcohol extract, is going to get more of the astragalusides. So it's like you'd want to have a wa you know, like a nice balanced extract when you mm -hmm. do that. Or someone could take the powder and just put it in foods and then their body will extract what it needs to and have it with some fat, you know, coconut oil or whatever you're eating right. that has fat in it, okay. avocado. And so that's really important. Turmeric is probably the, one of the best examples of that. So turmeric is actually very poorly absorbed by the body, but it's so popular. And that's another, you know, that's a great herb to add into things that you are making, whether it's blended or soups or curries and things like that, right? But it actually needs fat to be absorbed, and black pepper increases its absorption. Yeah, see, we don't know that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, and it's really interesting because if you watch people take it, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be in a little capsule, you know, most people are now taking it in a yep. pill. Yep. You know, they're not, you know, they're not taking it and putting it in their soups and yeah, things like exactly. that. Very rarely do you see anybody take that and add a fat to it. Yeah. Exactly. They're just taking it. So if you take it in a capsule, that's fine, especially if it's a concentrated capsule, you'll get more from it. But ideally, you take it with food that has fat in it right. so you can optimize your absorption. And if your digestion is not very strong, which a lot of people it's not, it's fairly weak. We just talked about the microflora. Yeah, yeah. That's a huge issue. The microbiome might not be very strong, or maybe you don't produce enough stomach acid or enzymes. Then you don't even break down those capsules super well. So exactly. That's, that's a problem I right. think that I see a lot is sometimes people are just thinking, oh, it's just easy to pop a pill. But really, like, you have to look at the whole person and, their, and what's going on. If their digestion is strong, they don't have any problems in that area, they can eat pretty much whatever they want, everything seems really good, then great. Maybe a capsule is fine, but the quality of the capsule matters too. But then if it's weaker and you know that about yourself, you might want to take a liquid form of it or make something like the golden milks that are really popular now. You put turmeric in some, say, almond milk or dairy milk or whatever oh, yeah. you prefer, some cinnamon, some cardamom, some ginger, and you yeah. just like drink that. It's a really well absorbed, put a couple of, uh, you know, cranks of black pepper in there and you're good to go. And that's got the fats. It's got all these other like beneficial herbs that help synergize with turmeric. Yeah. That actually improves digestion, digestive function with the ginger and the cardamom. Cinnamon helps stabilize your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. So there's like a lot of different ways you can consume things. It's just sometimes people don't want to take the time to slow down. Right. To take them. But th you know? that's why we have a Nutribullet. Exactly. Or any kind of bullet. You can put so much into, you put, <laughs> into uh, one thing. Right? Oh, my gosh. It's Are you so kidding true. me? Everything goes into the yeah. Nutribullet. Yeah. You can get, you like, your dose of greens. Your dose and of everything. Fats. You can put your coconut oil in there and your omega-3 fatty acids. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Your, all your of it. All of the above. And... <laughs> you know, the hemp, hemp seeds now. Yeah. Hemp. yeah. That's love a new hemp thing. Hemp. I love I yeah, hemp they seeds, taste really too. Good. Yeah. Why do they? I mean, well, they're really the, high in like omega three fatty acids, okay. you know, and I think so the, the fattiness of so them. So basically, really, you're saying they're pure fat. They're a lot yeah. of fat, okay. and some good fibers. You know, they're filling. They're yummy. I like them. Well, <laughs> you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, and I think we'll just go ahead and skip the break, Benny, if we could, is I I wanted to talk with you, uh, and I know it's not on here per se, mm -hmm. but I did want to talk with you about two things: mm -hmm. mushrooms. Number one. Um, now, my naturopath, Dr. Darvish. Mm -hmm. Mushrooms, mushrooms, them, mushrooms, right? mushrooms. I got dark mushroom powder stuff. I got a lighter mushroom powder stuff. I got mushroom powder name stuff that I don't even know about. <laughs> and, you know, for a while, I wasn't really quite getting it. Mm -hmm. Like, I was, like, trying to put them in my Nutribullet, not tasting so mm -hmm. good. But you can make soups out mm -hmm. of these, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What are the do's and don'ts in working with mushrooms? Yeah, so mushrooms, I mean, I imagine most people probably listening understand that mushrooms have some amazing medicinal effects. Right. Um, and they're really important components in our lifestyle. So they're separate from plants, right? They're yeah. not really herbs, but not they an do herb. go under that herbal medicine kind of they do. idea, right? Because they're from nature and they have all these beneficial compounds. I would say there's a few ways people cook them into broths. You know, bone broths are really big right now, which yes. is an excellent way of getting minerals from bone if you do that. And uh, the cartilage and the, the different, um, the glucosamine that's in there and things yeah. like that are really yeah. beneficial for healing the gut, but also for building bone and yeah. joint and stuff like that. So you could add your mushrooms into that. And while you make any broth, you make any soup. Mushrooms often, like especially reishi, actually go really well with chocolate. Yeah. So if you did like a dark Do you have like cacao, a recipe for that? I could come up with when, one. When are you doing the mushroom can, class? I know. I need to do the mushroom, mushroom chocolate class. class. I know. I need to. Right. That'd be a good one for the holiday. Right. 
That'd be super fun. Yeah, because I've had reishi chocolates that you can't taste the reishi in there at all. Really? Because they really complement each other. Or people make, um, they actually add reishi mushroom to coffee and just like brew it like normal coffee. That's what I've done. In there. I've done that. Yep. And with hot chocolate. I mean, there's lots of different ways you mm-hmm. can incorporate that in. Um, but yeah, sometimes, you know, if you don't have, you know, the time or can take that mm-hmm. effort. I make these little like tahini herbal balls with pow- different herb powders and tahini and honey. Oh, and you could roll them good. in coconut or chocolate or whatever and eat those. So mm-hmm. that's a way of getting Tell people what tahini there. is because tahini many people don't know, but it's butter. yummy. So it's Yum. raw sesame ground sesame seeds ground up to make this butter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's used a ton in Middle Eastern cuisine. Yes it is. Yeah, and hummus and tahini um the what's that sauce that is it tahini? Well, that's what it's called. But that sauce they put on, um, like, Greek food. I forget what it's called right now. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but tzatziki. Yeah. Oh, no, there's another one. But anyway, it's used a lot in that kind of cuisine. But it makes a – it's really high in calcium, Mm -hmm. really high in protein. So it's like a really nice, quote, unquote, nut butter, you know, that you can utilize. It's delicious. Yeah, Yeah. it's great. And if you get it and add some garlic to it, I mean, it's great over vegetables, too. Steamed vegetables. Yeah, that and make a dressing out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But you can definitely do these kind of herbal balls by adding powders to nut butters and getting the right consistency. So when you say powders, give me like an example. Astragalus powder, reishi mushroom powder. Okay. Um, right. You could mix in some, um, what's another really good one? Maca. You mentioned maca, that I earlier. love maca. We're, yeah, we are working with the maca team yeah, now. Yeah. And you're going to be hearing a lot from those guys. Okay, cool. Um, maca is something for me that I, I, up until recently in working with the maca team, I've never really been able to get it down. Mm-hmm. And they have some of the best red and black, and it's just so Good. All the different strains. It's so good. Which are so individually. Yeah. But what about maca? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, this is something people, and we're going to be talking about maca a lot. But I, I guess my question, I know we've got a couple of minutes left. I always worry about, like we talked about before, mixing the right mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. together, mm-hmm. right? Because even with my Nutribullet, they don't go into that. They're not, they, they don't claim to be herbalists. They don't claim to do any of that. Mm-hmm. They're like, Throw the veggies in, throw the fruit mm-hmm. in, boom. Mm-hmm. Um, do these powders and herbs, do they still work if you put them in a soup and boil? You mm-hmm. know, because some people say, no, you can't, don't boil that because then all of the nutrition is out of it. Mm-hmm. How do we know? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a good question. I think um, we have tradition, which tells us how traditionally cultures like China or say maca was, uh, comes from, to us from the Andes. Yeah. Um, how was it traditionally consumed, right? And yep. they were seeing benefit from that. So that that kind of gives us clues, right? Like I was saying about astragalus, it's classically been decocted, which simmered, cooked. Like it's a very fibrous root, so that makes sense, right? Yes, the it more does. you soften it with water and boil it, the more the compounds are going to come out. Um, something like maca, I mean, they traditionally ate it. It's in the rutabaga family, and they'd consume it as a food, right? right? And we pretty much just get it in powder form in this country, not in any sort of tuber form. So I think cooking maca is actually fine. Yeah. I think that that makes sense. Um, I think no, the more we learn about the constituents, the more we can say, actually, you know, it's more water soluble or more it's fat soluble. I definitely think that it's important to include fats in your food because if there's components in the plant that are more fat soluble, they'll come out better when you consume them with fats. And if you're putting them in something like a Nutribullet, we just talked a little bit about yeah. that. Your body breaks down and utilizes what it can out of the plant. And that really depends on how well you can, like, use that nutrition, right? Mm -hmm. And that's true of kale. I mean, raw kale, for some people, doesn't actually extract very well or come out. They don't don't get the minerals from them very well. Um, And, you know, what's interesting is if you use too much of those raw brassica family plants, they actually suppress thyroid function. So lightly steaming them or making sure you're not just getting only collards and kale and exactly. Brussels sprouts and things like that, which are very, they're all in that brassica family. So it's this balance, right? I mean, yeah. we don't know all the answers 100% to say, oh, add this much of this and this much of that. And if you mix these together, you're going to have the most potent effects. A lot of it is a bit of, as we learn more about the constituent bases of these plants and how they're best utilized in the body and what biochemical pathways they take to get used Um, Then we learn more about maybe what are the best methods. But in the meantime, mushrooms have been shown to definitely come out better in hot water extractions. 
that's like a proven thing at this point. Yeah. So boiling them, decocting them is actually very beneficial. So adding them to soups makes a lot of sense, yeah. right? Totally. Totally. Turmeric was always consumed in curries with ghee and black pepper and other herbs, and turmeric was better absorbed in that way. So they just somehow knew that or just incorporated it in and right. it happened to work out. So there's a lot of things that we just we need to learn from tradition, but we also dovetail it with what we understand from science and say this is to the best of our knowledge right mm-hmm. now. This will will, will optimize your intake. I, I just have to tell you though, because part of what we're talking about today, and and you know, Katya, by the way, is going to be uh, we're doing a complete series with her, yeah, so this is going to be, be fun. But mm-hmm. I, I want to tell you this, and maybe you can talk to this. We got a few minutes. I can never remember ever in my family ever garlic. Mm. that was not immersed in or had in it or somehow with it or somehow in oil. Yep. I had, you know what I'm saying? Yep. You would never see like a garlic piece. Right. Right. It'd Without be, oil. Yeah. It'd be sauteed in olive oil or cooked. Or just be oil. sitting yeah. in there yeah. or roasted Infused garlic. Into it. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you just literally watched, you know, the grandma mm-hmm. take the bulb of the, the garlic and smother it in like, olive oil from the old country Mm -hmm. right that's what they did but we got so far away from oils oh i know and i think we're talking about today you know some of this stuff is not going to work if we don't do that exactly i know i think it was really unfortunate this whole fat free craze like the 80s and almost kill me even topically you know we we talk about oils coming like full yeah here we talk about oils for the skin yeah they're so incredibly beneficial but a lot of you know i was the same way i thought oil free everything was a good idea especially since i have more acne prone Mm -hmm. skin Mm -hmm. i was terrified of putting oils on my skin oh me too i thought it was going to break me out and i was going to be just covered you know? know and clogged but really, it's how you use them, which oils you choose, um, mm-hmm. just like internally. You know? But did like, you even grow up, like I had acne too, didn't you grow up with them saying, oh, don't eat it, don't, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and, you, and here we were, like, depriving our body of these essential fats, and so it was like our body produced more oil to try to they compensate. They did. It's just like, it was this vicious cycle. <laughs> yeah, so I absolutely agree with you that fat is a good thing, and I think we're uh, really starting to realize that, you know, like, as a culture. If you were me around. growing up in the Bronx, you smelled like olive oil twenty four seven. I mean, that's and what oregano, you, but garlic. that's what grandma put on you. Yeah, I mean, oh, we right. didn't have fancy Smothered, like yeah. uh, like what from Italy. Yeah, we had olive oil that went on your body everywhere. I think that's a, a really good thing. It actually. is. Well, you know, this we've talked about a lot today. Tell folks if they want to know. How do I put it all together? Mm-hmm. Because I spend time with you. I know mm-hmm. we put things together. Mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to what we're going to create for mm-hmm. my upcoming birthday. Tell them how they can schedule time with you yeah. and, and a consult. And by the way, they can just come in the shop Yeah, you as can well. just come in. It's just more a matter of like, do you need my focused attention? Are you willing to, do you have time to wait? I know when we put together your, your gift kits that you had to like, come in and just be willing to spend like an hour while we did that right and that's yeah, that totally was so great fun, and though. fun yeah. yeah and then you can wander around pet my dog abby yeah. just hang out yeah. drink tea but in the um but if you want more focused time or one-on-one time or something you want to talk about is a little more private or you just want that space then you can call or email and we'll set up a time to actually schedule to sit down together and go through what your concerns are or what you your needs are in your life and i i love doing that for people Well, I want to just say to everyone, you know, we're getting ready to come into the holiday season. And these make, you know, whatever you can customize Mm -hmm. with Katu, they make fabulous holiday gifts. And I'll tell you why. Right now, we're in a culture where people are so appreciative of things that are thoughtful and made. And when you give a gift to somebody and you say, you know what, I put this together because I know you like this. I know you like this and I know you like this. It is so appreciated Mm -hmm. now. Absolutely. It means a lot. You know someone put time and effort, didn't just run or get it on Amazon, just order it, you know. Exactly. It's like they actually took time out of their busy lives. I mean, time is such a valuable commodity. And then to choose something that's natural and that really speaks to you exactly or taking care of that person too. Yeah. And the other part of this when you work with Katya is she's going to give you like a little experience that you can do with it. I mean, what I love about it is this is the kind of stuff that you share with your kids you share with your family and it is a gift that's amazing mm-hmm. that you know so my friends already asking me what are we doing for this birthday it's another <laughs> one of those big birthdays and what are we doing and I'm like I don't know I don't think I'm doing anything and then you and I connected and I thought oh this is what we're gonna do 
Wonderful. We're going to make something. We're going to create something. Mm-hmm. We created an entire entire ritual around this where we had the special herbs mm-hmm. for different people, and they got to pick which they wanted, and we we put them together. It was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. Really it was really <laughs> fun. Katya, one more time, phone number, website. Yes, and thank okay. you for today, and Katya will be back. Great. So Urban Wellness is the name of my business, and it's urbanwellness.net. Just remember that one, 206-330-2171. And you can come visit us in downtown Kirkland, 103 Lake Street South, in, uh, right downtown on the waterfront. We'd love to see you. Awesome. Thanks and so hopefully next time you come back, we're going to be doing a little video, and maybe you can bring some things in. Awesome. What do you think about that? That sounds fun. All right. We're going to take a short break, everyone. We'll be right back.